This video is to discuss sampling distributions for means. So, the central limit theorem tells us that we have to meet a certain set of criteria. And if that criteria is met, then the following statements would be valid such that the average of the averages mu sub x bar is always going to be equal to the average or the mean of the population. So that's mu. So meaning the center of the curve does not change. Your, your mean is always going to remain the same. And the standard error of the sampling distribution or the standard error of the mean is going to be calculated by taking the standard deviation of the population and dividing by the square root of the sample size, all shown in the 9.3 lecture. Now I wanna show you how to get these problems into our guru and solve them using our technology. So first up, a quality control expert at this particular computer company wants to test their new monitors. The production manager claims that they have a mean life of 93 months with a standard deviation of nine months. If the claim is true, we, they want us to calculate what the probability would be that the mean monitor life would be greater than 91.4 months in a sample of 66 monitors. Okay, so recall with sampling distributions, you are no longer taking probabilities of individual monitors and finding the probability of a randomly selected single monitor and what may happen to it you are taking the probability of an average of a sample size. And in this case, it's an average of 66 monitors and finding the probability of a specific situation. So that's the difference between the continuous probability we learned last chapter and the continuous probability we're learning in this one. So things that we'll need are mean, okay? We need to, even before we pull the means, let me step back. We, for, we need to pass the central limit theorem. So the first criteria of the central limit theorem says that if it mentions the data is normally distributed, which means it's symmetric, so it could be uniform, it could be bell-shaped, then we could have sample sizes chosen of any size. But if it is not mentioned, we never want to assume that would be a large assumption to make uh, we would then um, need to have the sample size be at least the size of 30 in order for the central limit theorem to be valid. So here they're giving us a sample of 66 monitors. So that meets the criteria of the central limit theorem. And therefore we can state that the average of the sampling distribution will also be 93 months. And we will have to calculate the standard error or the standard deviation for the sampling distribution by taking the standard deviation of nine and divided by the square root of 66. That is a formula given by the central limit theorem. So let's calculate that first because we will need it. So let's pop into our guru. And that's just gonna be a straightforward calculation that we will do in a calculator. I do highly recommend that you use the Desmos calculator right here inside of our guru so that you can copy and paste what comes out. Um, usually it's a lot of decimal places and we never want to over round prior to our final answer. It could cause our decimal places to be off by just enough where Hawks will tell us we're wrong. So I am gonna put the standard deviation, which was nine, and divide it by the square root of the sample size, which was 66. Let me just jump back and double check those numbers. Standard deviation of nine, sample size of 66, okay? So this is the standard error formula given to us by the central limit theorem. And this is the standard error of the mean, or it can also be called the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So if you highlight the number and you hit control C if you're on a PC and command C if you're on a Mac, you'd be able to copy this number exactly how it is and put it into the correct space in the continuous probability calculator. Let's bring up that calculator now. So if we come over here to the probability simulation area, drop down our probability menu, and come over here and select the continuous probability calculator, just like we did in the last chapter. Okay, it's so the same calculator. Know that we were asked to calculate a probability, so we are identifying the correct mode of the calculator. 
In this chapter, we are working with a normal distribution. Uh, let's enter our mean. I need to go back to the problem to figure out what our mean was. Oh, that's right. It was 93. Now I am going to hit control V if I'm on a PC or command V if I'm on a Mac to paste that standard error that we calculated in the scientific calculator. Notice that um, our guru does not specify whether we are calculating probabilities on a single um, item or whether we are calculating a probability of an average of a group of items. The only way to have that uh, calculated correctly is to calculate the correct standard deviation separately and then paste it in here. So I'm going to use my left arrow on my keypad to scroll over just to make sure it pasted correctly. And I can even pop back to my calculator. 1.107 was the beginning. 1.107. Okay, looks like it copied and pasted correctly. Now let's find out what direction we have to select. Are we doing a less than, which is below, or greater than, which is above? Um, these would be the differs from problems. So there's two different kinds of differs from. There is a differs and then greater than, and usually those words are not next to each other, so you really have to be careful of the wording in the sentence, or differs less than. So differs less than is between, and differs greater than is outside. We're gonna do a couple of those problems in a little bit, so we'll get back to those. This problem is asking us specifically for the probability that the life would be greater than 91.4. So greater than is an above problem, Type in 91.4 and we're ready for our eyeball. We now have the probability, if I was to translate this, I would say that it's approximately a 93% chance that the average of 66 monitors will have a lifespan greater than 91.4 months. All right, let's try another one. Let me find one that says differs because those problems are definitely a little tricky to translate. Here we go. Suppose cattle in a large herd have a mean weight of 1,428 pounds and a standard deviation of 119. What is the probability that the mean weight of a sample of cows would differ from, keywords, the population mean by less than 11 pounds if 49 cows are sampled? Okay. So again, you have to be very careful because you'll notice the differ from is not next to the less than. So if you're one of those students that just bring your eyes to the numbers and read just the words directly in front of it, you might think this is a below problem, but it is not. Differing less than requires a couple of extra calculations. We will need to have a lower and upper limit that is the by the differ amount. And then we will need to enter those in and decide whether we're using between, which is a differs less than, and a, an outside, which would be a differs greater than problem. But first up, let's calculate our standard error of the mean by taking our standard deviation of 119 and dividing it by the square root of the sample size which they've set the sample size to 49 cows. I have passed the central limit theorem because my sample size is greater than or equal to 30. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here to my scientific calculator. I am gonna enter 119 as my numerator and 49 underneath the square root in my denominator to get a very clean standard error of 17. Okay, so now when I come back to my continuous calculator to start setting up, if I double click in this box, it will highlight the whole number so I can just click delete and delete it all out there. Type in a 17. My mean is 1,428, so I'm gonna put that here. This problem is asking us to do a differs less than. So differs less than means there's some upper and lower limit and if we're differing less than those limits, that means we're between those limits. So I'm going to select between. I'm going to have to calculate the lower and upper limit by taking the mean and subtracting the differ amount to get the lower limit. And then I'll take the mean and add the differ amount to get the upper limit. So let's take a look. I know my mean is 1428 and my differ amount is right here, the 11. 
So let me come over to my calculator and so I can show you. 1428 minus 11. So 1417 is my lower limit. Type that in here. Come back to the calculator. I'm going to do 1428 plus 11. And that gives me 1439 for my upper limit. And again, because the problem said differs less than, it requires us to be between these limits versus greater than requires us to go beyond those limits in an outside problem. So now I'm ready for my eyeball. And my answer would be it's about a 48% chance that the average of, um, what was our sample size again? The average of 49 cows would differ less than or would have, what are we talking about again? Uh, their weight. So there is a 48% chance that the average of 49 cows would weigh between 1417 and 1439. All right, let's try one more differs problem. Let's try to find a differs more than problem. Let's see if I can find one. Differs less than, differs more than. I wanted one where they give us, this is good. Oh, that's a less than problem, less than problem. Perfect. No, this is strictly greater than. Hmm. Okay. Um, I don't think I can go backwards, can I? <laughs> Let's see. It would be greater than, and they give us standard deviation. I'm looking for some, here we go. Okay. So Thompson & Thompson is a steel bolt manufacturing company. Their steel bolts have a mean diameter of 141 and a variance of 25. So that's what I was looking for, a little flare of a difference. There is, we've had this happen quite a few times in Hawks before, where they give us the variance instead of the standard deviation. And we have to know that we don't want variance, we want standard deviation. So there is one extra calculation in this problem. Once I see the word variance, I go to our guru and I calculate my standard deviation so I know I'm putting the correct number in the numerator for the standard error. So if I pop over here to our guru, I recall that variance is just the standard deviation squared. So in order to go from variance to standard deviation, I just need to take the square root of the variance and that gives me the standard deviation, which is five. So when I'm ready to calculate my standard error, which would be next, I would need to put five in the numerator and I need to divide by the square root of the sample size as long as I pass the central limit there and this formula will be valid. So let's keep reading. If a random sample of 49 steel bolts is selected, so there's my sample size of 49 and that is greater than or equal to 30. So I check the box, I have passed the central limit there. What is the probability that a sample mean would differ from the population mean by more than a differ amount of 1.7 millimeters. Okay, so let's first calculate our standard error. We need to divide by the square root of 49. So in this gray box, I'm gonna type in my sample size. I am going to copy this standard error so I don't round. I'm gonna head over to my probability calculator I'm going to double click the standard deviation to delete it out and paste my standard error in there. Again, I like to scroll back to the beginning just to make sure that it pasted correctly. I don't have any extra numbers in there that I forgot to delete. It's always good to give it a good check. My average uh, for the diameter was 141. So let's put that in my mean box. And this problem said differs more than. So that means that I'm going to need a lower and upper limit and I'm gonna be going outside those limits. So I'm gonna select the outside. If you forget to select this first, when you reselect something from this menu, it does clear out anything you've typed in the boxes previously. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you select your, um, your uh, translation first. All right, so now I need my lower and upper limits. I need my differ amount. My differ amount was 1.7. I'm gonna to need to subtract that from the mean and then I'm gonna to need to add it to the mean. 
So if I come over here, I'm going to have 141 minus 1 1.7 to get the first lower limit of 139.3. Then I will calculate 141 plus 1.7, and I get an upper limit of 142.7. Okay, double check all my numbers were correct. 1.7, 141 looks good. And I hit my eyeball for the probability of just about 2% chance that the average of 49 bolts will have a diameter either less than 139.3 milli millimeters or greater than 142.7 millimeters. So it's a very low probability that the diameter of these bolts will be extremely low on the end or extremely high on the end. Okay, so hopefully this helps you with the 9.3 homework.